and hello everyone welcome back to another video so as you all probably know by now i used i3 window manager for those of you who don't know a window manager is just something to manage your windows usually you'd have a desktop environment and the window manager will kind of come with the desktop environment but in a window manager like this, you don't have a desktop environment. You just have the window manager. Now here is a pretty interesting project. So also for those of you who don't know, I've been getting really into the NIM programming language. So I found a window manager that has been written in NIM to replace this guy's version of BWM. So right here, let's see. So it is in beta, but it is very usable still. And as you can see, to replace my build of DWM, which is written in C, and this one is written in NIM. Now the nice thing here is, this does have a config file that is not in NIM. So if you don't want to mess with the source code, you don't have to. But yeah, now you can follow its installation instructions and whatnot. But if you are on Arch, we can also, before I continue, just Git clone this, git clone and just do that. But if you are on Arch, you can just say paru dash s or yay if you use yay instead of paru and then nimdo dash bin and that will install nimdo. So just say yes. And in here you can go into your nimdo and you want to copy the config file. So config.default.toml. Now, before you do that, just make a directory inside of .config called nimdo. Then you copy from your nimdo directory, the config that we just saw, into .config nimdo, and then rename it to config.toml, like that. Then enter a password to install it. Cool. Now here you want to open up that config file before you boot up into Nimdo. And you want to change your default terminal to whatever you use. I don't use ST and this confused me a lot at the start because why couldn't I open up my terminal? But I have XFCE for terminal. Depending on what you use, you might have a different terminal. And here where it says D menu run, you might want to keep that. However, I want to make this Rofi because that's what I use. And I'll explain all of this in a second as well. And then I like to make that D. And yeah, then we're good to go. Now, once you save this, you can log out and then log into Nimdo. And I'll be back as soon as I've done that. So once you boot up into Nimdo, you'll see this. This is your kind of like notification tray to show you what's running. In this case, it's my screen recorder. And in here you have all of your little kind of like windows you can use, your desktop. And then as you can see, here's my recorder and here I am. Super enter will bring up the terminal, which is what I really like. Now we can go into our .config, into our Nimdo, and we can open up VS Code here, or whatever code editor you prefer. Here we go. So yeah, this is the Nimdo Window Manager. I didn't really know what to show you, so I'm just going to show you what we have here. So first you have your kill window, or kill Nimdo. This will basically log you out. So it's just Control alt delete This keys will say the key you have to press, and this modifiers basically are the two buttons or one button you have to press. We're super in my case at least, is the window button. Control and Alt are as expected, they are Control and Alt. Here is basically what you use to open up new windows. So it had D menu, I believe, but now it's Rofi. So if I go like this, I see Rofi and I can open up whatever I need, like Time Shift. And that's Super and D, so Windows and D. Then here's the terminal, which is Super and Return. And in here you can say what should auto start. Basically your Mega Sync and your backup service or whatever you want to start up automatically should go in here. If you already have a window manager such as i3, then 
you can just kind of copy and paste from there to here because its config file has a lot of the things you might want to use here. Then of course you have your general look and feel. So here we have the border width, so we can make that like five and that's this green thing here. If we save that and say Windows Shift and R, that will refresh the config file. And as you can see, it's still big. Everything's still recording, right? Yes, it is. I'm going to change that back to one, but you can also remove that if you want, which will just leave you with this. But to me, that's confusing because I don't know what window I am. This is the bar height, so that will change the bar here. So we go 50, now it will be nice and big. I don't like that at all. So I'll switch this back to 20. And of course here you can choose a bunch of other things. I'm not going to go too deep into that, just the ones you might want to know about. The gap size, which is kind of cool, change that to 40. And now you have these nice big gaps. Some people really like the five gaps here. So you might want to have it nice and big, like 90. Now it's nice and big. However, I don't remember where it was, but it was 12, okay. I usually like to keep it kind of small, so I'd probably go for a five here and I'd be happy. And here, of course, you have your controls. So Super Shift R reloads the config. That's what I've been pressing this whole time. You have your Super and K, which focuses on the previous window, Super J on the next. And this also works similar to the DWM layout where there's like the master and slave. So here you go. So they will all be smaller, whilst this one here on this side of the screen will be bigger. And you can, of course, switch them over to be bigger and smaller by doing that. You know, I'm not really too fond of the Vim key binding, so I don't really know how to move them all around perfectly. But that's basically how it goes. You can move them from screen to screen with your arrow keys. So now it's at 9. If I go to 9 here, then it's there. And it's Windows Shift Q will quit that. You can go back to 1. And yeah, it, that's about it. Windows F will make it full screen. It's just like a normal window manager. And as you can see, all of these. And as you can see, Super and then the number will take you to that screen. And it's Super Shift and the number will move it to the screen. So that's the config file. It's pretty cool. We don't have to worry too much about that right now, though. Now let's maybe, let's customize it a bit. Let's go here and open up Nitrogen. I just give it something in the background to look forward to. For example, I really like my Ostolfo background. So I will apply that. And the reason I like the Ostolfo background so much is because I'm on Arch and this is a Debian based logo. Anyhow, so now we have a nice logo here. Press enter. We have our terminal here. You can make it see through. I just don't know how to do that. I did do it last time I put it up. And we can actually figure out how to do that by opening up Sublime Text, going to my config and just finding PyCom, I believe. Uh, yes, here we go, PyCom. Paste that here. And now we have a nice background or a nice see-through background, which I like. You can just make this come on at startup. So here where it's startup, you can just copy this PyCom and you can paste it here inside of quotation marks and there you'd go. This browser as well, one thing I do like a lot about Nimdo is that you can change this dollar browser to say Vivaldi stable and not use your default browser because for some reason on i3, it always, always, always opens up every other browser except for Vivaldi stable if it uses the dollar browser. So I absolutely hate using that. So in this scenario, I love this. Cool. But yeah, there are a few things I would like the developer to improve. So if he's or she is watching this video, I would like you to maybe give better more dual screen support because I had to disable my second screen by like literally plugging it out because it didn't work that great when I had it connected. Because even when I disable that screen using a render by going here and removing that screen from the screens I have, I still had two of these and it just didn't look good. You know, I had two different screens. It's very weird. It could be because one screen was 720p and the other is 1080. So this one is 1080. And when I removed the 720p one, I didn't know what to do, but I didn't know what's going on there. 
So I would like that to be fixed. Also, a thing I've noticed, I want to does H stop show now, is sometimes when I open up VS Code, so let's open it up here. Now, this happened to me yesterday while I was trying to test this out. Let's see if I close it. Does it close as well? Okay, it does. But yesterday, when I opened up VS Code and I closed it with, with Windows Shift and Q, it kept running in the background. I don't know if that's just a random bug that happened or if I didn't close it as I thought I did. But yeah, that's maybe something you want to look at. Don't know why that happens. This can be a great window manager and I am willing to switch to it if it can get some improvements such as fixing that random bug where VS Code isn't actually closed even though I closed it because that could probably happen with other resource hogging applications as well. And where if I have two screens and I disabled one screen, then this bar up here, it's completely confused and my windows are 720p for some reason afterwards. So fixing that would also be nice. But yeah, it's pretty neat. And here we go, window manager is Nimdo. So that's also pretty cool. And yeah, I really do hope development still goes strong here because this can be a great window manager if developed right. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and have now maybe been encouraged to try out this window manager for yourself. And I will see you all again in the next video.